wrong they were for what they did. Sounds and more like humiliation. It, it was. I don't think we saw it as that at the time, but I definitely see it as that now. So much discipline, punishment. What happened in, in those cases? Well, if a student did something, broke a rule, did something wrong, they would be put on D. That was the term that they used, which is they would be disciplined. Uh, in those cases where I believe we um, didn't do right by the kids, those disciplines could go on for a week, two weeks, three weeks. The hard part for them was the fact that they would be confronted in these light sessions um, by staff on a pretty regular basis during, during the time that they were on discipline. When you say confronted? They would be, they would be confronted. The, the staff would say, try to get them to see where they were not fitting in, where they had done something wrong. And it could get out of hand. It could get verbally abusive. It could get physically abusive at times. For students like Sheila Coons, those light sessions were like satanic torture. We're taken out of bed. We're taken down to the chapel, all of us. Oh, I guess, we, I think we are in our, our uniforms. We're sitting down there. Um, people are crying. Other people are tearful. I myself was just like hoping to God that I wasn't going to get singled out. You know how sensitive you are when you're a teenager, right? How sensitive to humiliation. Um, people are crying, as I say. Um, and uh, we waited and we waited. For Father Farnsworth. We're children, right? We're, we're kids. And um, I remember like how about an hour later, he comes in from the back. I thought like at the time, he's like a bat out of hell because his, his priestly robes are flowing behind him. And I saw his face at that moment and um, he was smiling. He was smirking and um, he was just so looking forward to this opportunity to, you know, humiliate and frighten children. This guy sounds like a sadist. He was a sadist. Dan Michelson recalls a time when he was singled out at a light session. It was um, a day-long session of uh, yelling and screaming. I was stood up and humiliated for my, you know, being, of course, a pervert, disgusting pervert, um, being self-righteous, uh, egotistical kind of thing. A bedwetter? A bedwetter kind of thing. Students were crying. You know, because, you know, the amount of words and the hate was being thrown at them kind of thing, both by the staff and both by the prefects. Did that idea come from the community of Jesus? Yes. Did Charles Farnsworth hold these light sessions with the staff? We all held light sessions with each other. Light sessions were our way of life. And then it transferred to the students? Yes. That must have been really difficult for kids to hear everything that's negative about them. I think it was. I think it was, um, it was damaging. Um, to take a child out of his home and put him in a boarding situation is hard enough in itself. And then to suddenly put him in a situation where he's being told how wrong he is or how mediocre he is or... What a sinner he is. What a sinner he is. Um, I think it was very isolating, devastating hurtful. And the staff themselves suffered demonization at the hands of the headmaster, Charles Farnsworth. As a community of Christians, we had taken a, a vow of commitment to those in authority over us. And so basically, the way we lived, if the people in charge told us to do something, we did it. So you did it, no questions asked? basically, or if we did ask questions that didn't necessarily go over very well. Who was leading you off the path? <laughs> well, in the beginning, um, when we first started to live a life of obedience to authority, we had um, six, six people in charge. And over time, it changed to one. Was that Charles Farnsworth? That was Charles Farnsworth, yes. Did he push the envelope in discipline, in punishment? with these light sessions? Did he go overboard? Yes. Yes. Did Charles Farnsworth treat the female students 
differently from the male? Um, he and a lot of the staff under him had an attitude that if there was something inappropriate going on between a girl and a boy, the boy was totally innocent. So the girl was labeled a whore, a Jezebel, uh, bitches in heat. Yes, those terms were used. Pretty damaging to a young girl to be called a whore or a bitch in heat or a Jezebel. I think very damaging. Was there any incidents, because we've, we've heard of people telling us this, of sexual abuse? Yes. Did anybody get held responsible or accountable? No. Next, broken beliefs. Tell us Farnsworth wasn't a man of God. And searching for the truth. These people who are making the allegations liars? When W... July 2007, after more than 30 years, Grenville Christian College was closing its doors. Thousands of students have been given a supposedly Anglican education here. But for some, it was a place of hurt, of shaming, of abuse, and scars that have never healed. And on this day, the closing celebration for former students. What might be taken as an apology of sorts from Ken McNeil, one of the former senior staff. And let me say that when one member of a family hurts, we all suffer. And I'm sure we have Grenville family members who are hurting. And we can be sorry for, and we can regret, the role that Grenville has played in those hurts. It was not done with any sense of malice, or any sense of wanting to hurt. I think that all of us wanted to push beyond what you thought you could be pushed to make sure that you became the young people, the men and women that you have come today. But if we contributed to your hurt, I am sorry. Missing from this celebration was Father Charles Farnsworth, the headmaster who'd been with the school at the beginning, who'd run it for 14 years, and who some former students and staff claim was less the shepherd and more the wolf, Sheila Coons. You ever think back and wonder what kind of nightmare I went through? Or? Oh yeah, I remember after I left, I was thankful on a daily basis not to be there anymore. But yeah, I think it affected me probably more than I realized at the time. Um, Did it affect your faith? Um, not really, no. Um, I realized that I have great respect for Christianity and uh, when it's practiced properly, but what was done at Grenville was the opposite of Christianity. Um, Charles Farnsworth wasn't a man of God. Um, he was sort of like the Antichrist, really, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, yeah. No, it was, it was anti-Christianity that was practiced at Grenville, not Christianity, not true Christianity. Charles Farnsworth's version of what went on at Grenville Christian College may never be fully known. The former Anglican priest, headmaster, who in life was celebrated, met with politicians and government leaders, but who is now vilified by some. Farnsworth died in March 2015. By then, former students had already brought their class action against the school, former staff, and Farnsworth. Claims that they all vigorously deny. But before his death, Farnsworth wrote this about the allegations. The whole reason for being in our mission was to bring these people into the realm of the Christ. We've been accused of many things that I never knew of and never heard of, but I honestly think some of the people have gone delusional. Some of the things they said happened, some of the accusations of sexual abuse by me, they just did not happen. Farnsworth may be gone, but many former staff are still alive, and many deny that there was any abuse. One of those is Donald Farnsworth, seen here in an old Grenville yearbook. He was a former teacher and administrator and dean of men. Donald Farnsworth is also a key defense witness and Charles Farnsworth's son. W5 approached Donald Farnsworth for an interview. He refused our request, sending this email. 
it would not be appropriate for me to participate on camera at this time. In a second email, he wrote, I am not concerned over scrutiny. I am only concerned over the lack of truth in matters pertaining to the mission of Grenville Christian College. But we still had questions for Donald Farnsworth, so we approached him near his home just outside Brockville. Are you Donald Farnsworth? Who's asking? Victor Malrick, I'm with you. Don Farnsworth, he's, he's not going to bite, eh? No, okay. he won't bite. You know, I'm Victor Malrick, I'm with CTPW5. Really? Yeah. Is there a possibility to talk to you about what the, the goings on at the Grenville Christian College? Uh, probably not, because there are goings on still going on there now. And uh, so for me to really talk with details would be to maybe jeopardize some of that, that, uh, that going forward. I don't want to do that. Well, there's a lot of serious allegations here of physical sure. abuse, psychological abuse, even sexual abuse. These, these are pretty serious allegations. You were there at the time. Yeah. Yeah, they are serious. Probably they should be tried in court. But you, you were dean of men there, you were a math teacher there, you were head of administration there. You knew what was going on at that place. Are these people who are making the allegations liars? Like I said, I'd be glad to say that in the proper setting. I don't think uh, CTTW5 uh, loves the fact that you guys try to root out the truth, but not so sure that you've had any of that yet. Well, if you're not sure that we have any of the truth, why don't you help us out? My father, I miss him dearly. Um, one of the things that he said, you know, when you start making a, a campaign to deny things that people are accusing of, whether, whether they uh, are true or not true, uh, then you start raising issues that, uh, that mislead people even further. Are you saying then the allegations are lies or made up or fabrications? You know, uh, if I go fishing and I catch a fish and I tell you it's this big, I still caught a fish, right? Maybe it was only this big. I still caught a fish. So some of it is true, some of it is not I didn't say any true, of it's true. Some of it's exaggerated. I'm saying that those people probably went to the school and what happened to them and in their perspective may be different than what really happened. I'm just saying they don't know the size of their fish. The truth may eventually be decided by a court of law. But for former students like Dan Michelson, that's not all. What do you hope to get out of all of this? Uh, to heal. The after effects of what happened to me um, then have been so strong, a lot stronger than I really uh, anticipated. Unfortunately, you know, through the, through the, uh, the process of, of healing, you have to deal with the, the, the pain. Is there forgiveness? I don't know. Joan Childs hopes there is. The former teacher and administrator at Grenville and one-time close confidant of Charles Farnsworth has written former students, apologizing for the hurt she caused. Many students will say it never happened because they didn't experience it. They might have been there before it happened, they might have been there after, or they were there when it happened, but it never affected them. But for those it did happen to, I felt like somebody had to say they were sorry. I tried to get Charles to. What did he say to you? At that point, at that point, I don't think he could handle it. He couldn't handle it because it would say to him everything he's done was wrong? I think so, yeah. I think that's how a lot of people feel. But life isn't that black and white, you know? Um, it was a great school in so, so many ways. Uh, a lot of kids had a wonderful time there and terrific education. They look back with joy on every aspect of their life there. But that does not um, make it true that the others didn't have a bad experience. They aren't exaggerating. They aren't making these things up. As sad as it is, these things happened. Justice can move slowly. The class action lawsuit against Grenville Christian College was filed in 2008, only a year after the school closed. But it wasn't until six years later, in 2014, that the Ontario courts certified the suit, which represents up to 2,500 boarding students who were at the school through the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Discoveries of witnesses are nearly complete, but no trial date has yet been set. W5 will be right back. Salon Pasal. And that's W5 for this week. On behalf of all of us, I'm Lloyd Robertson. Thank you for being with us.